Everybody, Black Ninja 797 here, and welcome back to another episode of Left 4 Dead 2 Myth Busting Mondays. And in today's video for the final myth, we're going to be testing to see if whether or not that it's possible to shoot your teammate and have them not suffer friendly fire damage if you swap to your secondary weapon quick enough. Will this basically make your shot on your teammate null and void because you're tricking the game into thinking you're weapon swapping instead? So that is going to be the myth for the end of the video. If you guys have been enjoying today's video, please drop a like, subscribe if you are new, and if you have a particular myth that you would like us to test in next week's episode, please, by all means, leave them here in the comments down below. Or also, alternatively, you can leave them within my Discord server, which is going to be linked down below in this video's description. With all that being said, guys, I hope you have up enjoying this week's episode of Left 4 Dead 2 Myth Busting Mondays. Myth. Can you throw a propane tank at a hunter to knock him off of another survivor? Alrighty, my friends, so the very first myth is submitted in by not on my level slash a true winner one. So Glopersko is going to be the one getting attacked by the hunter. I am going to be the one trying to free him with the propane tank. So the hunter is going to be spawning in any second now. Let me know what you guys think the result of this myth is going to be in the comments. So as I am throwing it at the hunter, it doesn't necessarily free Glopersko, but you can see that there is a little bit of collision. The propane tank is not intangible. It does actually get affected by the hunter's body. It's bouncing off of it and just falling straight down. Unlike the punch animation, just simply throwing the propane tank doesn't seem to be strong enough to get the hunter off of Glopersko. So I'm going to mark the first myth as busted here today. Myth. Can the No Mercy gas station survive an explosion from a propane tank, a gas can, or a oxygen tank? Alrighty guys, the second myth is going to be submitted in Black Lop Ersko. Now this one I feel like is almost guaranteed to have a specific result because there's no way that the gas station can survive an explosion from any of these things. So I'm going to light it on fire with the gasoline can and in a second here I guarantee you it's probably going to end up blowing up. Okay, it's taking a minute. It's definitely taking a minute. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. You know what? Let's write off the first one as a fluke. Let's try the propane tank now. And both of them are now on fire. So I'm hoping that this will end up giving me the result that I need. Because right now it's making me question my sanity. It's somehow still on fire and not blowing up. This literally doesn't make any sense. Okay, it went out again. Valve, you're really making me start to question my sanity here. All right, well now for the last one. This is going to be the oxygen tank's turn, so it's once again, set the gas station on fire. It should blow up. It's flammable. This is an explosion. Even though, yes, it's a small scale, this should blow up and cause a chain reaction, but why is it not working? Valve, why is it not working? Valve, your game's not making sense again. Dude, there's some days where I feel like Valve is fucking with me because this gas station makes no sense. Why does the lift next to the gas station summon a horde, but blowing up the gas station does not? And second of all, why is it that I cannot end up causing a explosion with an explosion? I'm literally blowing things up right next to the gas station, and it's like, nah, I'm good. So that means that, yes, the second myth is confirmed, although this shouldn't happen in my humble opinion, because this just defies the laws of physics. Myth. Can bile bombs set off birds slash car alarms? Alrighty guys, the third myth is submitted in by Orange Rat. We are on the Sacrifice Chapter 2, and we're going to be testing out the birds first. We're going to be going over to this hill where the birds will end up spawning in and throwing a couple bile bombs from the bottom here, so that way they're only going to be set off by the bile bombs if this does work and not by us just walking up the hill. And when I am throwing the bile bombs so far, nothing is happening. I do believe that majority of the birds are in the air already and not necessarily on the top of that hill. Glabersko told me there is some, it's just that they were not registering. When I was hitting them with a bile bomb, they basically just ignored it. Now when it comes to the alarm cars, unlike the birds, they had the completely opposite result. They immediately started going off the moment that the bile bomb made contact, not even breaking, just by bonking the side of it. Based off the way you word your myth, I'm assuming you just wanted to see if one of the two of them worked, and since we did get the cars to at least work, I'm going to label the myth as confirmed. Myth. Can you crown Jimmy Gibbs Jr. with a minigun? Alrighty guys, myth number four is submitted in by Hashad. I've got a minigun on standby, and shortly here I'm going to be spawning in Jimmy. So Jimmy, please spawn in, show yourself. There he is, and I'm going to shoot him in the head. 
And it looks like, yes, it does indeed crown Jimmy Gibbs Jr. It has not only worked the first time that we tried it, but it also worked every subsequent time we tried it. As long as I timed my minigun shots correctly, I was able to crown Jimmy every single time I tried. So myth number four is confirmed. You can crown Jimmy Gibbs Jr. with a minigun. Alrighty guys, well if you ever want to try to shoot your teammates and get away with it, well let's see if you can. Let's switch over to the final myth now and see if whether or not it's possible to end up shooting your teammates and not damage them as long as you switch to your secondary weapon in time. Myth. Can you stop friendly fire damage if you click fire then swap weapons at the same time? Alrighty guys, the last myth of today's episode is submitted in by Tacky Rove Leader. So this is how we're going to test out the myth. I have a military sniper and Glopersko is on the stage of Dark Carnival while I am over by the lights. And then I'm going to shoot him in slow motion and hope that by switching to my guitar just in time, it will not end up giving him damage. Trying to get the timing down was the most difficult part about this entire myth because I want to try to swap literally as fast as I possibly could. I would click the fire button and then hit my two key to swap to the guitar like immediately, even beforehand sometimes. And trying to do it too early would lead to me not shooting at all. So I had to do it just right. But really, no matter what I did, it still ended up hitting and damaging Klopersko. You guys can take a look at his health in the lower left-hand corner. And this entire time I've been talking, it has been hitting him and going down. So I would say that this myth, regardless of how skilled you might think you are, it's not going to change the fact that you're still going to damage your teammates. Because these weapons are very hit scan. They act almost immediately as soon as you pull the trigger. You're not going to be able to get around this. If Left 4 Dead were ever to add in bullet physics and make aware that there was bullet drop, then maybe, but that's never going to happen at this point in the game's life cycle. Maybe in a Left 4 Dead 3 one day, so I'm going to say that the last myth is busted for today's video. Alrighty guys, but that's going to be here for today's video, and I do truly hope you guys ended up enjoying it. If you did, please consider dropping a like, comment, subscribe, follow, and all that beautiful stuff. And once again, if you guys have a myth of your very own that you would like to have us feature in next week's episode, please, by all means, leave it here in the comments down below. Or also, alternatively, you can leave them within my Discord server, which is going to be linked down below in this video's description. By the way, guys, as we wrap up the video, I just want to mention a couple quick things. Number one, thank you guys for 8,000 subscribers. That just means so much to me. I am very excited to end up planning the next subscriber special, although I do just want to let you guys know it's not going to be for 8k, it's actually going to be for 10k. I need to start delaying these specials a little bit because we've been growing the channel so fast, but every couple of thousands of subscribers, I still want to say thank you because I really appreciate the support. Secondly, I also wanted to mention that I have a second YouTube channel now, it's called Black Ninja 797 Extras. I made this for 7,000 subscribers, and this channel is dedicated to showing extras slash additional content that would normally not show on my main channel, and also bringing back some old series that I used to do. Currently, right now on there, I have my Half-Life 1 walkthrough going on, and I have some funny moments with my friends, plus also Challenge Accepted is back where you can request me to play certain games. If you guys want to check out any of my extras channels videos, I will leave a link down below in the description so you guys can go check out the channel. And lastly, I wanted to say thank you to Epic Games. For those that don't know, I have a supporter creator code with Epic Games, and therefore they're technically my first ever sponsor. So I wanted to give them a quick shout real quick and mention my code. I used to promote it back before in the past when I played Fortnite, but I haven't really been playing Fortnite as much recently. However, some of you guys that still watch my channel play Fortnite and want to end up using my code, so you guys want me to start promoting it again. So I was like, sure, why not? So in case any of you guys were wondering, the code is BLACKNINJA797 in all caps, and you can use it in the Fortnite and Epic Games item shops. Anybody that uses it, it's very much appreciated, and I just want to say thank you, and thank you to Epic for technically being my first ever sponsor. With all that being said, guys, I hope you end up enjoying seeing another YouTube video from the most unique YouTubers are ever going to see. Thanks for watching, guys, all of all of you, and peace out. Hey, meme lords. Jesus here. And you better have enjoyed that video there by the eternal god Daddy Ninja. You should probably subscribe, too. Or the mighty Moab will come for your balls. If you enjoyed the video, you might like it, too. And give me the memes. Flash, bang, boom!